Today we're going to look at scalar product, but before we can do that we need to define what we're talking about when we say the angle between two vectors. Now have a look at these three situations we've got here. The first one has two vectors diverging from a point, the second one has two vectors converging to a point, so they're, they're coming together to the same point, and the third one has neither. They're not coming towards the same point or away from the same point, and that's the important part. They have to converge to a point, or they have to diverge from a point, that third one is not the correct way to define the angle between two vectors. We can find the angle between those two vectors, it's just not where that theta is marked on the third one. If we were finding the angle between two, th those two vectors in that diagram, this is what we'd be doing. It's where those two vectors are moving away from each other. So now we can have a look at the scalar product. Now have a think about those words that are being used, that gives a clue as to what we're going to do. So product meaning that we're multiplying. Scalar means that it produces a scalar, which is just a number. This is also called the dot product because we write it as a dot there in the middle, so a dot b. This is important because there are actually two ways to multiply vectors. The other way is uh, the cross product, which you're not going to need for the AS course, you just need to focus on this dot product, but you must write it as a dot and not a times symbol. Now it's equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos of the angle between them. We can also do this in um, Cartesian form, where you multiply the coefficients of I together, you multiply the coefficients of y together, you multiply the coefficients of z together, and you add them up. Now that looks a bit weird like that, but it's much easier to see with an example. So here you go. We've got these two vectors. So if we want to find the dot product of those, this is all you do. So 1 times minus 2, minus 3 times 7, 4 times 5, add them all together. So we've got minus 2, minus 21, plus 20 gives us an answer of minus 3 and that's the scalar product. Here's our first example of a typical kind of question. So we're going to find the angle between these two vectors. We need a few components to be able to um, use that little formula we saw on the previous slide. So we need to work out the um, dot product first of all. And I'm just putting those into column vectors so it's easy to see where the multiplication is happening. We're also going to need the magnitude of S and the magnitude of T. Those are fairly straightforward things that you've seen before. Then we're going to put it all into that formula that's on that first purple line there. So bringing that down and replacing it with the numbers we've just worked out, this is what we get. So S dot T was 13, uh, modulus of S was 3 and modulus of T is 13 that'll be the same as times times the 3 by the 13 and the cos theta, that will equal to 13 as our dot product. So cos theta will be 13 divided by 3 by 13, so that's a third. And then on your calculator, inverse cos of that gives us an angle of 70.5 degrees between those two vectors. Now for this next one, I'm just going to borrow a question we used on a previous um, vectors video. Um, and do something else with it. So we have this triangular prism again and this time what we're going to do is find the angle between OB and AE. So just picture in your head now where OB and AE are. We need to find the angle between them. So first thing is we actually have to find those vectors. So there we have OB and AE just by using the directions with the IJK, you've had lots of practice of those. Now the scalar product of those will be the 2 times the minus 2, the 0 times the 3, the 6 times the 6, and add them together, and we get an answer of 32. We also need the modulus of each of those. And now we can put it all together in our scalar product formula, and work out what cos theta would be, so th Theta, just hold on a second. There you go. Answer of 43.7 degrees. 
and last set of examples here we're going to find p dot q and cos of the angle between the following vectors. So we need to work out each of the components that we need to use our scalar product formula. We need p dot q and the modulus of p and the modulus of q. Put it all together to work out what our um, cos theta would be. Now it's important with this one we're just asked to find cos of the angle. We don't have to go on and solve it to find what the angle was. So we can stop there at cos theta equals something. Okay, next one. Now this one is just in 2D, but it works in the same way. Follow the same process. And then the next one, be careful with this one because it looks like it could be 2D, but it's actually 3D. We do have i, j and k components, but uh, there's a zero on the k component for p and on the i component for q. So just make sure you include that zero there. Now, and apologies because that last bit at the bottom um, seems to be covered up by the watermark. So what that says is cos theta equals minus 3 over root 13 root 2, which equals minus 0 0.588. There you go. I've just finished uh, moved that up for you so you can see the, the finishing part of it. And finally, finishing off with a joke. What do organic mathematicians throw on their fireplace? Natural logs. <laughs>